The net present value or present value is shown in the basic analysis, lease analysis, sensitivity analysis, risk analysis, income statements, annual statements, and the utilities cash flow analysis. We're going to start off with basic to the bottom right. And whenever you're seeing the cash flows and planes, even though they're showing annual or quarterly, everything's being calculated on a monthly basis. So here we're going to switch the period menu item to monthly. And we can see that it shows the cash flows monthly and it's being calculated that way. And that present value or present value takes each individual cash flow and discounts it back to today, saying what would be the original amount deposited needed to get a, um, given a discount rate shown here of 10% to equal that amount. It does that for each month. Here we have a zero in the beginning, so the net present value with a zero in the beginning is really a present value. And how much would we need to deposit today for these cash flows to be equal to a 10% compounded annually return, and that amount would be 3331 The definition of present value is the percent of future cash flow to be received over amount of years, here we have 10, from today as derived the amount you would need to deposit today, drawing an interest rate compounded yearly, which here we have at 10%, to accumulate the cash flow dollars in the 10 years or whatever amount of years you have. The interest rate used in the calculation is called the present value discount rate. Here it is at 10%. And the net present value of an investment is a sum of all the present values of all future cash flows, less the initial amount invested. Here we have a loan that we would be getting on the cash flow before tax. So the amount, the net present value of that at 10% is 3.5. That includes the um, the loan. So let's exit and put in an amount this time. So we're here we're going to put $4 million in. And now we're going to look at more as a net present value. So here we're putting in, we're saying we're going to spend, we're saying we're going to spend $4 million. And what would we need to do to make 10%? And here it shows negative. So we need to spend that much less, $677,000, less than the $4 million to equal 10%. Whenever your IRR is less than your discount rate, your present value, net present value will be negative by definition. And whenever the IRR is greater than your discount rate, it will be positive. And that is because the IRR simply goes and finds the present, the discount rate that makes the net present value zero. So that's the definition of that. Now let's exit and go to the investors page. This is where you put in your discount rates and you can have a different discount rate for different cash flows. So here we have a before debt of 10. We'll make the before tax 11 and the after tax, just to emphasize a point, I'm going to make 3%. So now we go to basic and we now we can see that the discount rate is shown differently for the different kind of cash flows. Here's the cash flows before debt and then before tax and then page 3 is going to show the cash flow after tax and we made the cash flow the discount rate after tax 3% the IRR is higher than 3 3.8 so by definition the net present value is going to be positive because we can spend this much more money and still make 3% you can start the cash flows in any month you want here we'll modify the cash flows to 12.07 and have them go however long you want we'll make it 98 years and we go to basic to the bottom right or you can go up to 99 years here it calculates monthly but all the way out let's go to show the cash flows yearly and we can see that we're going out to 2105 and it calculates the net present values for all that time we're going to exit back and change the change that back to 10 years now you can also do any individual lease if you go to lease analysis, it's going to show you the present value of just this particular lease and also the annual present value. And if we go to summary, it'll show you the present value. That is the net present value, but it's shown present value just means that we start off with a zero dollar amount. So what is the present value of these leases discounted back to today? Also, if we go to the report annual statements, you're going to be able to have the uh, net present value for each year going out. That assumes all the cash flows up to that point and a sale in that year. 
we'll go to the income statements. At the bottom of the income statements, you're going to have the net present values as long as you show them with this check mark. And here are the net present values, assuming that you have the cash flows up to that point. So from this point, discounted back to the beginning, what is the net present value or the present value? Here's the net present value. And we're going to exit. You can also go into the utilities cash flow analysis and import the cash flows. Here we'll do before tax. And you can um, use this to validate the net present value inside of Microsoft Excel or Google Spreadsheets against the XIR and XNet present value. Planes will match those XIRR and XNet present value inside of Microsoft Excel and Google Spreadsheets. Now we'll exit. And the key to these things is when you go to sensitivity, one of the great things about net present value is it takes all the assumptions into account. But that is the weakness because a weak assumption could vary or skew the net present value. So here what we're going to do is vary the, the sale price parameter, a 10% cap rate, at the end against the net present value before tax. And we'll vary that from 6 to 10 and step to 0.5. And when we vary that, all the assumptions are being taken into account when we see this, this line. And that's important. The reason why this is important is that since net present value takes everything into account, you want to see what is it sensitive to. And we can go and vary anything that you've entered in Plan E's and vary it. For instance, just the uh, vacancy factor. And when we run that, that's taking into account the vacancy factor over time. Since it's done monthly, we could be very specific and say um, when specific releases end and they go into the renewal process, how long, how many months will they be vacant if they do leave and you have to get a new tenant? We run that, and Planes is taking the end, varying that and viewing it on, on a monthly basis, and you can see how that's shown. Also, you can vary multiple assumptions at the same time against the net present value. Here we'll put the inflation rate, the cap rate, and the general vacancy and credit loss, and vary that against the net present value after tax, and we'll do 500 for each one of these iterations it's actually doing a, a whole new net present value. Each net present value is, in this case, 10 years, so 120 months, and it's randomly selecting out of the top here. So for one scenario, it might pick an inflation rate of 2, a cap rate of 11, and a general vacancy factor of 2, and that might be the lowest net present value shown. And then it might be a highest inflation rate, a low cap rate, and a low general vacancy and credit loss, and that would be the highest net present value. And then you can view this as a cumulative distribution or a probability distribution. And we'll make it a little easier to look at. And these are the kind of things that you want to be able to do when you're looking at a net present value, time value of money measure, is vary the things that are making up the net present value. And that takes some of the negative away from the net present value in that you are varying the things that might be sensitive to.